He's the slick-talking, jive-walking, the one and only morning banana ho host that you're watching. It's Adam Josh. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the Morning Banana Show. We are here in the mountains, in the hillside of the Algarve, darling. And... I'm flanked by our bananas here, and today is August the 29th of 2024. I've got a mix of things here to eat, and I can take you through it. I hope that you're having a good morning. Um, over here, I have grapes from an orchard that's just near our farm here, pomegranates from the river. Pomegranates, growing wild here. You can tell that they're not quite ready, so we asked the locals, hey, when did these actually, when are they red all the way through? And they said November, so we're in August, the end of August. So a couple more months and we'll pick them again. This is one of the pomegranates, how it looked when we before we picked it off the tree. But banana from Madeira, and I have my coffee as usual and some creamer. Avocados grow naturally here. Uh, there's avocado farms everywhere. One thing that's changed since last time I did the morning banana show is I've planted vetiver around the outside of the banana circle. And uh, I have so many vetiver, I have so many papayas ready to go, but we want them to be a bit bigger. And also, um, Last night, the banana circle was used for one of its intended purposes, which was like a meditation circle. So we had um, a farewell party here on the farm for uh, Tiana and Eve. No relation. And... Um, I mean, we've only met them once before. I don't really know Tiana and Eve that well. As much as you can if you meet somebody twice. I'm really flattered that they wanted to use our farm. I'm, I'm sure Desiree is equally flattered uh, for their a venue for going or their going away party. And it seemed it seemed to fit well. We had a good time. They brought some food. We had some food. Of course, there's food on the farm. As an example, they were the third, fourth, and fifth people, I think, outside of my family to try um, my olives. So, I got to actually get some feedback from the people who were trying my olives for the first time. I would say they went over pretty well. A couple comments were... These seem like a little too hard, but some seem perfect. And I said, well, I'm practicing. Like, I literally picked the olives from that tree right there. So yeah, it's not really all of harvest time, but I'm practicing. So I have another few going and then I'll pick more and I'll, it's a lot, you know, it's a lot to learn. So I wanted to get started somewhere. So I just started with the olives on the tree that are, are ripe. Some of the olives in our tree, they we have a few different olive trees, but some get uh, more sun than others. So you can imagine some will be ready before others. Some are tiny, some are big. I don't pick, I didn't pick all of them, but some of the ones that I picked were really ready and some of them weren't ready. I woke up this morning thinking about how Back in 2015, Desiree and I went to Pie Bird in Ontario, Canada, and um, when we first went to Pie Bird, it was like an amazing vegan, it still, it still is an amazing vegan farm stay run by Yan and Sherry, but it was our first time really ever seeing vegans run 
a farm stay and lodging. So we got to learn a lot from Jan and Sherry. We literally bought some plants from them that we planted at our farm, at our garden in um, Canada. We haven't brought any of those seeds here. <laughs> But apparently, I, I've met, since then, I've met some people who smuggle, <laughs> who smuggle seeds and trees and plants in their luggage around the world. We don't do anything illegal. We don't, I'm not into drugs, as you know, but there are many people who smoke marijuana in the world. <laughs> I don't want to grow marijuana. But usually when you talk about smuggling seeds and fruits and and trees and plants the first thing that people think of is marijuana no but i'm talking like people are smuggling unique strains of banana or unique strains of climbing bean you know i've met people that do that it makes no sense you know like laughing like wow they take this really seriously actually um yeah, so I woke up thinking about um, being in Jan and Sherry's farm stay and meeting fellow guests, uh, Matt and Eva. Uh, they've been married since then. I, don't, I didn't really keep uh, close contact with Matt and Eva, but um, we've kept closer contact with Jan and Sherry, I would say. But we were sitting there and explaining to them, to Matt and Eva and um, Jan and Sherry, you know, one day we would like to have like a vegan commune, a place where vegans can go or people could like learn about veganism. And, you know, we, we could have a vegan farm and we could live in a sustainable way. <laughs> and I woke up thinking about that and how last night we had all these people here who were interested in veganism and learning about living uh, off the grid and sustainably. They were asking questions about how we source our water, how I use gray water. They were asking questions about off-grid living and what type of electricity needs we have. And it was like a portal opened, in retrospect now, like a portal opened from 10 years ago at that dinner table to 11 years or 10 and a half years forward to last night. Because the conversation I was having back in 2015 was the exact same conversation I was having last night with these people at a table, but the backdrop was different. And instead of Jan and Sherry's um, project, it was Adam and Desiree's project here in the mountains of Portugal, the way that we would want to do it and not the way the other vegans would want to do it. So vegans have their own idiosyncrasies, right? And we, uh, Desiree and I are no different. We want to do things the way we want to do them on our vegan farm stay. And other people, when they think of a vegan farm stay, might have a different idea. And uh, so one of our um, key points that uh, we have been dealing with a lot here is that we do not want to use horse manure or sheep manure for our plants. And because we're in Portugal, it's like a go-to. Oh, you use, of course, you have to use sheep manure. You have to use horse manure. And I find it hilarious because people are here on the farm telling us that we have to do that while they're looking at our plants, you know. Look at all those, these beautiful plants that are growing all around you. And yeah, we don't do that. We don't use horse manure here. <laughs> but you have to. <laughs> no, we don't. Yeah, so, yeah, people like their horse manure. I've, I've ran into a lot of uh, what could only be referred to as horse manure salesmen here. <laughs> Let's try this pomegranate together. It, there is a couple red, little red seedlings in there. But kind of flavorless, to be honest, but now we know. There's so much pomegranate here around the riverbeds. There's so many rivers in Portugal. You find a river, go walk along the riverbed, you'll find... Lots of bamboo, Nespera, loquat, and pomegranate growing wild. Oranges everywhere. So we know where all the good stuff is. We're just waiting for it to um, to be 
be pickable. I don't have any pomegranate here on the property. Same with Nespera. I don't have any Nespera here on the property, but because there's so much of it around, we don't need to uh, plant our own right now. Same with grapes. I was thinking about growing grapes. We could, but there's so many abandoned orchards and, and places around here where it's just growing wild that we don't need to yet. Maybe we will. We'll see. I'm talking within walking distance. Like go for a five minute walk. Grab, some, grab a bushel of grapes, grab some lemons. Um, I woke up to the news the same as you guys did that uh, not only Robert F. Kennedy decided to uh, leave the Democratic uh, plantation and join Trump, much to the chagrin of his immediate family, but also Tulsi Gabbard now has endorsed Trump you can see through my old tweets back in the last election cycle, I was saying that um, my opinion back then was Tulsi Gabbard was the only viable contender to Trump. And I thought if the Democrats could get their head out of their butts to actually support a real veteran, like a real military service woman who's not completely pale white skin in the Democratic Party, that I thought if they could have done all that and got over themselves that Tulsi could have been president. <clears throat> She's well-spoken, articulate, um, you know, being a congresswoman from Hawaii, uh, she has a more appeal to the people, but as we all could see, um, the Democratic Party basically threw her under the bus, put her on a no-fly watch list and sent her off to, or deployed her off to God knows where, every corner of the world, maybe secretly hoping that she could die in a, in a battle somewhere. Who knows? It's messed up what they did to Tulsi Gabbard. I wanted, it, wanted her to be president over Donald Trump last election cycle in the U.S., so we'll see what this election cycle holds. But, um, yeah, unless you're voting specifically other party, like, Green Party, Libertarian Party, then unfortunately it seems to be that if you're an American who just loves basic freedom and uh, loves to have a country and borders, then, you know, it, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't seem like you have a lot of options. It seems like the Republican Party seems to be the only choice. I wish that this was a joke, and I had to explain this to my kids. It reads like a a Hollywood horror movie, but they actually had Planned Parenthood trailers and buses outside of the Democratic National Convention in, in Chicago, where you could apparently uh, go either get medication for abortion or schedule your abortion. I don't want to believe sitting here that they were doing abortions in the vans. You could look into that to ask if they were actually doing that. I, I don't want to believe that. I don't want to believe they were snipping testicles for men on the property, but you could look into it. I'm here in Portugal. I asked people in Chicago, like, hey, what's going on? And even people I know in Chicago were like, yeah, we're not going near that place <laughs> because of the, the protesters protesting the, against the war in Gaza, <laughs> hoping that the Democratic Party will be their, their people to end the war in Gaza. Got news for you, fans. The Democrats aren't interested in ending any wars. <laughs> They're interested in creating more wars. That's the, the bottom line. And as somebody sitting in Europe, I can assure you that the President of the United States affects political and financial situations in Europe, believe it or not, through their inaction or action, the choices of a president sitting in Washington, D.C. can directly affect the lives of people in Europe and in Afghanistan. So as an example, so it does matter uh, who is president. You know, just the, the end of it. It does matter because somebody could have stopped 
the botched withdrawal from Afghanistan, as an example, a president with their head screwed on straight. But we don't need to talk about politics. Check this out. You see that? The new Do Not Reincarnate t-shirt. I got one in white, got this one in gray for my son, and then I have one in blue. If you would like to order one of these shirts, do not reincarnate if you feel the way I do, that, you know, this incarnation is enough. Let's not do it again. Uh, you can order one. I'll put the link in the description of the video below. You can choose your size, choose your color. <clears throat> it ships right to you. And I make some money. You get a shirt. It's a win-win, right? Uh, you could also pre-order my book. If you feel like you support the channel and you want to support the channel, you can all just come to Love Farms Day like these people did yesterday, and we can chat with you. You can hang out, pitch a tent, hang out, bring a camper, learn about some off-grid things or vegan veganism. I, we love talking about veganism. Actually, they had to shut me up talking about water quality. I frankly said I could talk about water quality for probably two hours straight. You know, I'm a retired technician, and this was one of my main topics. So I think at some point they did they did shut me up about talking about water. Here comes Desiree, Hello. the owner of Love Farms Day here in the mountains of Portugal. I was just wrapping up saying they could order it, say, saying they could order a t-shirt and um, a t uh, you could buy me a coffee uh, through the link below. We love coffee. I do. Uh, Pre-order my book if you want. You could come to the farm stay. I told them about uh, the event yesterday and how we had a going away party here at our venue for Tiana and Eve. I don't think I missed anything. It was a good time. You guys are feel feel free to come and hang out like Tiana and Eve and the crew did yesterday. I hope that you have a great day and thanks for following us here on the farm and thank you for watching the Morning Banana Show August 29th, 2024. Take care of yourselves. Have a great day. Bye, everyone.